All right, so the first thing you're going to want to do is go ahead and drop in some type of an object. Cube works really good for this. I'm going to go ahead and turn on Cavity and bring the ridge up. I'll go to Edit, Preferences. I'll type in Auto. And you've got an Auto Mirror. You want to go ahead and turn that on. And the Hard Surface Toolbox depends on that, so you're going to need to have it on anyways. And so what we can do is go ahead and hit 1. And the Carver Tool, actually, just in case you guys want to follow along, not too many people use the Carver, but it's built into Blender and it's free hard surface modeling. So go ahead and engage that as well. So if you click on the hard surface toolbox or you hit Control Shift X, that'll bring it up. But I just have it in a one click, so that way I can do it this way. And now I just went ahead and cut that. And actually, let me see real quick because this likes to cut edge bevel weight sometimes. Okay, it didn't do it this time. Perfect. So Control M middle mouse that's going to flip this thing according to the origin point right so you can left click place or right click to cancel that i'll just hit g x i'm going to move this over doesn't have to go too far and now i want to use you can go to object uh, set origin do it here if you want but i'm just going to do it here and i want the origin to the cursor just so much quicker so i put all these tools together plus custom bevels and things that don't exist within blender a custom remesh as well and apply the shade and the auto smooth together one shot you don't have to play with it and you have an auto mirror on with orientations positive negative and then the auto mirror slash tool it which helps you get it all done so now if i hit Control m and move it across it's on the x-axis that's the only place it's really going to go it's not going to flip over to the other axis right now but you can flip it upside down. You can also flip it, uh, you know, positive to negative, just like a symmetry. All right, so the one thing you want to do, though, is hit Alt-D. Now you've got a copy of this. Now you hit Control-M on the copy, flip it over, left-click to place it. All right, and now here's another cool thing we can do. Let's go ahead and join these with Control-J. I'll press 1, and I just want to make a nice little cut right here. So remember, shift Control X will bring up the Carver tool, hit space bar twice. You'll have circle, hit X a few times to get a nice circle. And then you can go ahead and bring that in. Hold down Alt to move the circle, and then you can just make a cut wherever you want. And so now you've got this cut, which you could leave the auto apply off. And I'll just click off of that so you don't have any shading issues. But you can click shade auto smooth, which will shade smooth as well. Or you can click shade flat to bring it back and I'm actually going to leave it flat and I want to go ahead and select all of these right here and I hit control B and I want to bevel these very very slightly you can hold down shift then I'm going to hit extrude faces along nominals which is on my mouse button for the back button for the web you can actually set that up it's pretty cool hold down shift move it a little bit to the right left click place it go back to object mode and now you've got this excellent detail right here okay very cool and now I want that detail over here. So if I go to the X and tool it, you see it's going to bring this side. So you can try to understand how it goes. If you hit 1, this is going to show you the negative, okay, to the positive. So this is starting from positive and going the other way. So what we're going to do is hit the back button, Control Z. I want to I want to bring this from negative side. And so now it's going to bring that. And if I apply scale then that would be necessary for one single object to bring the origin point to its actual true center now according to geometry but you don't really have to do that since we have two objects so now let's have a little bit more fun and i'm gonna hit alt d here and i'll use my 90 rotation and just double click it so now i've got all of these set all right and so what i could do actually is i could go into face select and inset and extrude this and now you see what's happening is I'm actually affecting the other side here. So it gets kind of tricky. It's a little bit, uh, it's a lot easier once you just get to the point where you start using it a lot more. And then I go back into object mode. And now that is an actual instance that's doing that. So if I hit Control J and join all these, that won't happen that way anymore. And what I can do now is I can go ahead on the Y axis, go to positive, and it'll flatten those two out. 
but I don't want that, so I'm going to go to Y negative and bring this to the other side. Now, Control M will kind of flip these, so you can flip them back and forth, you can flip them upside down, and just kind of move things around as you see fit. And then left click to place once you have it the way you want. And then if I want to get real crazy with this, I can hit 45 on the Y. Let's apply the scale and tool it. And now I've brought this piece over to the other side as well. And so there's a bunch of ways. Just kind of get, get used to it. Uh, I could 45 that back. Now, you know how you don't really want everything to be perfectly uniform in Blender. And so let's do... Let's do this. I'll grab these sides, start a nice little inset right here, and Alt Y because I've got this menu and I can bridge those edge loops. Give me something a little bit different to work with. And if I want, I can go back in, select this edge loop, P, and separate, and I'm going to come back out and grab just that loop and take a look at it. don't actually like that so I can turn on auto merge that was weird how that set up like that it's okay though and now I can do is hit a for all G and I'll just kind of move this back I was gonna scale it down anyways something like that G and Y and move it over just a touch I'm just having some fun here, guys. All right, and then I can go into wireframe to see what I'm doing and extrude this out on the Y. Looks good. Move back into solid mode. And I can just select this one edge, Alt-Y, select all those edge loops, fill it. Come over here, select this, Alt-Y, select edge loops, fill it. And that's cool. So now I've got something a little bit different, Control-J, Join, go ahead and bring that in. And if I want to mirror that across the X, then now I can mirror that. Actually, that's the wrong direction. Go to positive. There we go. And so now I can bring that to the other side as well. And then the control M will kind of flip these things around if you have something different going on. And so maybe I select all of this double tap I hold down shift and get a funky little extrusion something that looks like that nice and then control M because I actually wanted it over there left click to place it there you go so there's just a few tricks a couple things you can do and as always I've got the auto bevel with the preset so you can just throw a really nice uh, bevel on here the only thing I don't have added because you never know what somebody's gonna need would be the sharp to arc to clean up all of those corners. And then that looks really good. So thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next tutorial lesson.